Hello everybody, thank you for tuning in. Uh, this is just going to be a short video demo that shows you how to make a proper loaf of bread. Um, it is a newer recipe to me, not one that I'm overly familiar with. But one of the first things you need to do is get all your mise en place in place. For those of you that don't know what mise en place means, it means to have everything in order and everything in its place so that when you're doing the, the cooking procedure for whatever it is you're cooking, you're not scrambling around trying to find everything. Because the last thing you want to do is go to put your cakes in the oven, but you can't do it because you haven't sprayed your pans, but you can't find your sprays, so you're scrambling all over the place looking for it. So you don't have to deal with that. So what I've done here is I've gotten everything pretty much together. I've got four cups of flour in here that have been sifted. I actually need five for the recipe, but what I wanted to do is leave one to show you the proper way to do it. Because what happens is a lot of times with cakes, breads, and so on, is people will pack the flour into the measuring cup and then sift it. Well, in theory, that's not really an actual cup of, of flour. So what you want to do is you want to grab your measuring cup, like the one I have here, and you want to spoon it into the measuring cup. And the reason you want to do this is because it doesn't pack it down. Um, it's all on its own natural weight. Whereas if you pack it down, you actually end up with more than a cup's worth of flour. So we're going to fill this up here real quick. Butter knife is one of the greatest tools for scraping a, a flour cup. Um, it levels it out. It doesn't pack it down. It scrapes off the excess. And as you can see, that is a level cup of flour. And you got your sifter here. We're going to dump it into the sifter. Again, the purpose of sifting flour is typically to incorporate a little bit of air, break up whatever little flour chunks are in there, and to uh, keep it light and fluffy. Now, once we get done sifting this flour into here, we should be pretty well set to go. And if you look in here, you're going to see clumps. Okay, and these clumps will dissipate as you're sifting through. Um, and you want to tap down the sides so that you get all the flour. And that is, again, part of the reason why you sift flour. As you can see, there's nothing left in there and we're finished with that. Now, this recipe that I'm working with tells me that I need a half an ounce of yeast. And a lot of people have problems with yeast. They can't get it to rise right, they don't get the right temperature from it, so on. Um, so what I've done is I've gotten what they call rapid rise yeast, and now the recipe calls for a half an ounce of that. Yeast is sold in quarter ounce packets. So what the recipe says to do is to make a well in the center of my uh, flour, okay, and place the yeast with the dry ingredients, which I already have measured out two teaspoons of salt and four tablespoons of milk. Now they want the milk to be heated up to a lukewarm temperature um, for the yeast. Uh, it's calling between 120 and 130 degrees, which the recipe itself says between 110 and 120. So if we hit 120 degrees with this milk, then we're okay. Um, but the yeast specifically says to place it in with the dry ingredients. So we're going to dump our salt in here. We're going to open up this yeast. this in here just like so. Uh, this recipe should yield about two loaves. Um, when you mix this in, obviously you want to do something that's not going to pack the flour. You want to do something that's not going to uh, contaminate it and so on. And You just want to mix it thoroughly. And As you can see, a wire whisk works really well for this. Um, don't be afraid to stir it around because as of right now you haven't activated the yeast anyway um, until you add a liquid to it. And right now we're just mixing this all up so that we get it good and incorporated into the flour. Make sure you're scraping the sides and the bottom. All right. Now, I think that's pretty good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our milk, we're going to put it into the microwave for about 
10 to 15 seconds at a time until we get it up to temperature. And as you can see, I have a thermometer here that I'm going to use to get it up to temperature. Um, and an important note with thermometers, one thing you want to do is you want to make sure that your thermometer is properly calibrated. Okay? Because what will happen is, is if you drop it on the counter, on the floor, it will become uncalibrated. And this ice water here is what I used to actually make sure that my thermometer was calibrated correctly. Um, and the, it's real simple to do. You just you get a glass of ice water, put the thermometer into the ice water as such. And most of them, like this one, you just turn the dial um, and it will adjust it accordingly. But in a glass of ice water like this, it should read 32 degrees Fahrenheit, um, which it does. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go on ahead and we're going to place our milk into the microwave. And we're going to do 15 seconds at a time. And um, we'll check it every 15 seconds till we get it up to the temperature that we need. Um, and when it comes to working with yeast, you definitely want to follow the recipe to a T because it, <laughs> it's a sensitive, sensitive ingredient. Alright, we're going to check this now and make sure it's done. Um, we should be at around 120 degrees, which is what we were shooting for. And it is at 120 degrees if you want to take a look. Just a hair below 120, but it will adjust slowly. But we're good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add this milk to the recipe here um, as per the recipe design. What you want to do is you want to make a little well in your flour. Okay? It doesn't have to be a real deep or real big well, but you just want a little well which is basically just a little spot where you can pour your hot liquid. Okay? And you're going to mix in the flour slowly, a little bit at a time. And eventually what's going to happen is it's going to become real doughy. Pour this in here into our well just like we directed. Do not be afraid to use your fingers for this. Um, this is one of the many cooking things that you'll be using your fingers for. As you see, we're starting to build it up. You just continue to mix it up as such. Okay, notice the dough ball is getting bigger. Not an issue. Okay, we're going to keep mixing. A little bit from the outside each time. Alright, now we added the four tablespoons of milk to it that was at 120 degrees. In addition, the recipe called for um, three quarters of a cup. Again, lukewarm water. Okay, now, we've kneaded it all together, as you can see, nothing real attractive about it, um, but it has been kneaded together, and we're going to let it sit here now for 20 minutes, um, give the yeast a chance to uh, rise, and once it rises, we're going to knock it back down and knead it for a few more minutes, according to the recipe, um, and then... We'll continue where we left off. In the meantime, what you want to do is you want to go on ahead and get your oven preheating um, to 350 degrees for this specific recipe. Um, the recipe will be listed on a title page for you guys so that you can see the exact recipe along with um, the exact ingredients and procedures on the recipe. Um, Furthermore, if you just wanted to get any recipe from me, all you have to do is send me an email. Again, the information will be at the end of the videos um, for all of you to see. Get this excess fire off my hands here. We'll get the oven kicked up. Uh, let this rest for a minute. I'm going to get a damp towel put over the top of it so that it rests appropriately. Alright, we're going to get the oven going, 
get stuff clean, damp towel. You don't have to have it drowning wet. And one of these towels, they're real light. I mean, you can almost see through it. Um, are perfect. A little bit of warm water on it. Bring it good. Because you don't want excess water dripping into your bread because, well, that'll just cause problems, you know. Baking is literally a science, okay? Um, when you're following a recipe, it's more like a formula for science class. And it doesn't matter what it is that you're baking. So we're going to set this off to the side. I'm going to clean up my mess here a little bit. And after this bread is rised, um, and we're getting ready to knock it back down. I'll come back to you guys and we'll continue on. All right, now we've had this sitting on the oven to get warm, moist heat. Um, that'll help the yeast activate and raise the bread. I uh, did that for 20 minutes. As you can see, it has doubled in size a little bit. What we're going to do now is we're going to pull it out of here and we're going to knock it down a little bit. When you pull it out, what you want to do is you want to put it on a lightly dusted counter so that it's not sticking all over the place. We're going to smash it back down. And we're supposed to need this, according to the recipe, for another 10 minutes. All right. You don't want to have so much flour on your counter that you're actually adding flour to the bread. All you want to do is just knead it up a little bit. And again, the recipe calls for 10 minutes. So that's what we're going to do. Um, I went on ahead and lubed up a bowl with a little bit of oil. Because um, once we're done kneading it, we're going to put it in this bowl. We're going to put it back on the stove with the towel over it. And let it rise again for another hour to hour and 15 minutes. <clears throat> At which point, we'll knead it down one more time. We'll uh, separate it and put it into our uh, bread pans. I'm brain, brain freeze for a minute. Put it into our bread pans, which there again, you want to um, have well oiled so that it doesn't stick. Because um, the worst thing that can happen is have a nice, good looking loaf of bread and then all of a sudden it's sticking in your pan and there's nothing you can do about it. <clears throat> now, one of the reasons why we're making bread today is because I'm making what they call hot browns, um, which I plan to record and show you guys how to do a hot brown. It's a classic dish from Kentucky, um, traditionally found uh, at the derby season. And, uh, so we're going to use the bread from this for that, rather than buying bread at the store or uh, bakery or wherever it is you purchase your bread products from. So let me finish kneading this. We'll get it in the bowl. And then when we come back, you'll see the rice product in the uh, blue bowl here. And what it looks like. Because I'm going to continue kneading this for about another five minutes or so. But there's no reason for you guys to sit there and watch me do it. You get the idea. All right, guys, my uh, photographer has had something else to do, so I'm going to try to do this on my own. Maybe a little sketchy, you see me blanking out or whatever. But um, at any rate, it has been an hour and a half. The bread has risen, doubled in size, which is what we were looking for. Um, and here it is. As you can see, it has grown quite a bit. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to knead this down one more time. And we're going to sprinkle a little bit of flour on the counter so that, um, you know, again, we don't want it to stick and tear it up. So we're just going to sprinkle a little bit of flour on the countertop. Pull it out. We're going to break it down. as such here. All right. All right. We had a little bit of 
this scrap there they got a little overheated so we're going to go on ahead and knead this down again like we were told um, just take off the scrap and get rid of it basically all right once we get it kneaded down what we need to do is get it rolled into the appropriate size pan um, so that you have the appropriate size bread so now we're going to tuck the corners under and fold it under so that we have a nice rounded smooth edge all right we're going to expand it out here just a little bit to fit into our pan now one of the things that we have to do when we uh, finish getting this shaped out the way we need it is we're going to put it back in the pan and allow it to rise for about another 20 minutes or so give or take um, just depending on the size that it ends up being as you can see it is somewhat tricky to get the edges folded under so that you have a nice smooth um, level layer of bread as opposed to all rickety um, so now here we have our loaf so what we're going to do first thing I you know we got to spray this pan really well I really like Baker's Joy um, because it does have a little bit of flour in it and it helps prevent the sticking. Um, don't be afraid to use a little much. Uh, it's better in my opinion to use a little more than a little less. Um, because again, if you use too little, it will stick. So we're going to spray this pan down really good. Make sure you get the edges all the way up to the top because if you don't, when the bread rises in the oven, it will, in fact, stick to the edges. So we want to make sure we get the whole pan. As you can see we have a good coat there. Alright, so now we're going to set this loaf into the pan. We're going to cover it again with our wet towel. Let it soak for another 20 minutes. Okay. Um, or sit for another 20 minutes rather. And rise up again. Once it's done rising, we're going to place it into the oven, but I'll show you what it looks like after it's finished rising. Um, so let me get this squared away, and I'll be back in 20 minutes to show you guys what the rest of the bread should look like.